Here is TurboCAD LTE. The, this film is to going to explain the, the user interface. We're not going to get really into tools here, just to show you what you're going to be first of all looking at and how to customize it so that it works for you. On the right here we have two lots of tool palettes. We have Drawer and if we click on here we have Modify. Both these sets of tool palettes we'll look at in later training films. For this one we just want to look at the interface. I'll explain what you're looking at, where things are and how you can set it up so that it suits you. Down the bottom we have the command line if you want to use that. Personally I haven't used it for 15, 16, 20 years maybe. I wouldn't dream of uh, wanting to use it. But for anybody who does want to use it, the main uh, AutoCAD commands are exactly the same, although some of the sub commands may be a little different. Uh, not too different though. And if you go up to help, there's a getting started guide, and there is also uh, the PDF of the uh, manual, or you can go online and see the manual as well. First thing we would probably want to do is uh, make the screen look as, as we'd want to see it really, as we'd want to work with it. So if we go to options, we can go through a few pages here to set things up so they are exactly as we would like them to be. Uh, all of these pages got loads of things to click on to. We're ju I'm just going to go through the main ones, the ones that are personally changed. The other ones I might change at different times, but who knows. So general, um, It'll, it doesn't say open in last uh, layout. Uh, it will do that automatically. Uh, you can click onto this so that it opens the last working file. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't do it personally, but anyway, that's. Um, <clears throat> it says save drawings every 10 minutes. I always disabled that. I don't trust it for a second. <clears throat> not, not because I don't trust the TurboCAD, it's just I don't want my drawing to be saved every 10, 10 seconds or 10 minutes or any time at all, really. I, you know, I'll uh, when I want to save it, I'll hit Control S, and that'll be saved. Um, desktop. It defaults to not have rulers. I quite like rulers. It gives you an idea about how big the what you're looking at. So I'd turn those on. Here's the uh, information on the inspector bar, and here it says you're going to see the inspector bar, which I like anyway. So that I wouldn't change anything else now. Preferences. Uh, zoom factor is 1.2. That's when you when you wheel the mouse, when you roll the mouse or the wheel of the mouse backwards and forwards. That's the sort of speed that it jumps. If you make that larger, it'll jump in uh, bigger increments. Um, none of these I would personally want to turn on. Um, this just shows you show user coordinate system. So you just just tells you which way the X and the Y and the Z coordinates are in. <coughs> Uh, icon size of the size of your uh, cursor. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I would turn this on zoom in or out centralized. This means that um, if I turn that on, then when I zoom, it will zoom to the point of your cursor. I think that's quite useful because you, you can work your way around the drawing in that way. If you want to zoom into a point, just put your cursor there, push the wheel mouse forward, and you'll zoom in. Uh, you can have view to relative uh, fixed to relative origin as well. I wouldn't bother with any of these other ones really. I don't think. Uh, snap aperture. Ah, now at the beginning the snap aperture is on. So if I can show you, you can see you see that circle and the crosshairs. I don't particularly want that. I'd like it to be as slick as possible. So in preferences here, I would turn that off. But that's up to you. Auto naming. Uh, oh, this is on, but it actually it defaults to not prompting for a name. So if you've got a, if you're creating a group of more than one object, obviously, um, it will just save it as a group. If you click on prompt for name, when you save the group, a, a dialog box will turn up and it'll say, what do you want to call it? So I think that's probably useful. And insert blocks when creating. You should, it, def, it doesn't default to that, but I would certainly turn that one on. Now, what that does is that if you've created a block in your drawing area, and when you put it into the blocks library, if that is not checked, then your block will disappear. It's no big problem because you can just pull the block out again. But if you click onto insert blocks when creating, when you take that block into your blocks library, your original block will still be there. So I would turn that one on. Uh, as for everything else, I wouldn't bother with any of this at this stage. 
who needs it uh, you do have an, uh, a choice here of using the red disc which should speed up your manipulating of the drawing in line form uh, or you can go back to GDI if you choose GDI click on flick a free drawer I'd suggest you just try both of those and see which ones works the best for you uh, that I don't think are really great importance so unless your drawing starts to become very large and very complicated then red disc might uh, give you the edge in terms of speed um, drawing setup uh, what are we going to show here in display I wouldn't bother with anything there grid now it defaults not to show the grid the, the, I come when I come across people I should think about half the people like the grid half people don't like the grid anyway so it defaults not to show the grid I like the grid because I use it for lining things up and again it gives me a sense of space and idea about where everything is so personally I'd turn that on when you do turn it on, it defaults to points, which are absolutely useless. They're so small you can't see them. Crosses are okay, uh, but I generally quite like lines. And I think this, and the space in between the lines here is uh, five millimeters. Uh, obviously, change that if you want to, but if not, don't bother. Uh, divisions. I think these divisions default to four for some unknown reason unknown to me. So I'd change that to five. I've obviously done that once before. Space units, if you do change to metric, it's going to presume you're dealing in millimeters. If you want to change to centimeters or you know meters, then you're going to have to change that. Otherwise, it's going to presume you're dealing in millimeters. Um, if you don't change it, when you come to put the thing on paper, you're going to find some very funny things in the scale. It's going to say one millimeter to so many meters or something like that anyway. Whereas if you make sure that here, um, this is millimeters here if you're dealing millimeters or it's centimeters if you're dealing centimeters or meters that in that way when you get to paper space and you put the picture on a paper it will say 1 to 25 or 1 to 2.6 1 whatever it is so you should just remember that angle you can change this but it's an international standard so you won't really bother here's you can choose you can create new layers here just new as many as you like uh, background color click onto here if you want to change the background color if you want to a slight cast on it and print styles we won't bother with and it was okay and it's gone to that funny color doesn't really work for us here so I'm going to go back to there and get this uh, background color I'll change that back to white it's a pity it wasn't one that was just very slightly off white but it's not so that's your that's the first part now the second part looking for the tools you want so obviously you can choose a line you choose a line you, you'll have these instructions there it tells you that on the end define the end point of the line it tells you the length of the line and the angle of the line and it also down the bottom of your page here look I've got the boxes down here as well and you can keep going there until you right click and say finish if you choose a um, a rectangle for example if you draw a rectangle it drops the uh, the tool so I'm in select mode so it'll draw one rectangle and then it drops it and then you're back in select um, if you want to keep using that you've got two choices you can hit the space bar then you've got the rectangle again see it's lost it again so I'd have to hit the space bar each time so I'm just drawing a rectangle oops forgot that time hit the space bar draw a rectangle the other way to do it is to right click and say repeat so if I take say a polygon that side if I draw a polygon ah polygons I forgot about this you can't just draw a polygon you have to say whether you want the, the inscribed in, in the circle or about the circle outside the circle so you got to say where you're sort of defining it really whether you're measuring if you're going to measure it whether you're going to measure across the uh, corners or across the flats so with a polygon hit space bar I've got the polygon again which one do I want then it'll draw it or right click repeat polygon oh you've still got to choose anyway so that's one thing to remember if you push down on your mouse and move the thing about you can pan just like in AutoCAD but uh, um, any tools that you forget where they are if you go up to the top right here and right click this will appear there's all your toolbars so if you were looking say for the copying tools or something and you couldn't find them you could find them there and there they are and they've popped out 
Okay. Those will be in parts here, they won't be in draw, they'll be in modifier, but uh, as I say, it's an easy way if you're, you know, when you're new to a package, you're always losing bits and pieces. Now, also all these things here are on by default. Turbo headlight, but, well, layers, if you turn it off, you, you see, you can see these things at the top change when I turn these things on and off. Um, Turbo headlight, LT workspace, styles, properties. So you can turn these things off and you'll see when I turn these off, see that all various bits are disappearing. So at the top now, I haven't got anything like the same amount of information. If I turn on main, here's my main tools, they've appeared again. If I turn it off, they go away. Personally, I wouldn't want those on. Modify, again, same deal. Uh, properties. Here's your properties. So this would actually tell you which I think you need properties on personally because if you select something uh, up here it tells you it's black, it's a continuous line, it's a default line thickness, uh, by pen it's got no fill. So I think properties were probably a good one to have on. Call this back again. Um, styles. Here's your styles. Now styles is simply where you get rid of the, the command line once you're fed up with it. Here it is, the command line's on. Here's the styles part. If I click onto that, then command line goes. And I can take this out here, and I can get rid of that. <coughs> and that's how I would draw. In terms of snaps, if I'm snapping a line from one place, I have to use, uh, I think it's Alt, V, and that will snap to that line. Okay. TurboCAD generally, it's just a one key shortcut. It's V. In TurboCAD LTE, it's Alt, the letter. And all the others are the same. Uh, Alt E for the center of a polygon. Alt C for the center of a circle. Alt N for nearest graphic, etc, etc, etc. They are all in here on keyboards. And here's all your keyboard shortcuts. And the snap ones are halfway down somewhere. There they are. And I think we'll just call it a day for now. That's about it for your beginning. <clears throat> you should uh, just have a little play around now.